Okay, so uh, let's talk about connect and develop. Um, connect and develop is a idea that's formed with a fundamental basis that any one company doesn't have all the talent in the world, that uh, there are ter terrific number of ideas, assets outside the four walls of a company. And uh, connect, is all, connect and develop is all about understanding the needs of our consumers, understand the jobs that we need to do, and then leverage the best ideas in the world, combining what we know inside with what people know on the outside. So we just get a huge exponential increase in the number of ideas that are actionable and bringing value to the consumer. Uh, at P&G, it was called research and develop. And we wanted to uh, sort of really signal a change from the business model of research and develop. So we basically took the R, changed it to a C. We called it connect and develop rather than research and develop. Just really trying to signal the fact that in the whole area of discovery and uh, trying to find new ways, we want to connect rather than just stay inside our four walls and do research. Um, one of the major elements of connect and develop is linking up with others. And um, there are all kinds of others. There are other people inside the company. Many companies aren't linked very well internally. Just think of the number of business units. Take J&J, &J, for example. Here's a company that's made up of uh, 160, 170 companies. Imagine the number of people there are to link across the walls of a company like that. So linking internally, linking to suppliers, people you already have a business relationship with, or just linking to academics, uh, training or institutes around the world, all kinds of research institutes and so on. That's a major, major part of Connect and Develop is learning how to do that. And obviously the benefits are huge. I mean, you get to multiply uh, the number of people that you work with, uh, the number of ideas that you come up with by a huge number versus just trying to do it inside. So let's take Procter Gamble as an example. Procter and Gamble has 9,000 people in its R&D organization. However, if you look at the number of people that um, work in Procter and Gamble's lines of business, let's say on the research side, absorbent materials, absorbent materials are in baby diapers, they're in Swiffer mops, they're in feminine protection products, they're in wipes, a whole variety of things. But if you take all of these science areas of Procter & Gamble, colloid chemistry, perfumes, packaging, and so on, the number of people that are available outside Procter that we could, Procter could access uh, of equal talent to P&G people in terms of education, great facilities like Procter & Gamble, and uh, people that are accessible. In other words, you could work with them. You know, they're not held captive uh, by a company or whatever, but there's a you know, clearly you could uh, knock on their door and they'd answer the door and they'd entertain a proposition to work with you. There are 1.8 million people out there that look like that for Procter & Gamble. So Procter & Gamble has 9,000 of them while there are 1.8 million. So for every one that we have, there's 200 on the outside. So obviously the invention possibility goes up by at least 200. It, might be 200 factorial. I'm not sure how to calculate all of the permutations of linkages. But nonetheless, it's a huge driver to try to figure out how do I get connected to the world and co-create with them, have them contribute their intellectual property, their best ideas to help you come up with innovations that in turn drive value for your customers and also shareholders. So it's a really big deal. Um, risk. Um, a lot of people will be concerned that if you tell the world that this is what I'm looking for, the competition is going to find out, for example, right? Um, competition is really not sitting around looking for what the briefs are that you're sending to the outside world. Um, I mean, there are ways to overcome that fear if it exists. One is you can uh, mask 
mask off the problem that you have by describing it in a way that no one would know who this is coming from or, or what the actual problem is. Uh, you don't need to put your name on it. If you're Procter & Gamble, you don't need to put your name on it or if you're Pfizer or PepsiCo or whatever, you just put a brief out there. Um, so I think there is, most of the risks are perceived versus real. So for example, in Procter, uh, when I was doing this work there, um, in the seven years, and we put out hundreds of briefs, we had not one example, zero, not one example where you know, a competitor has read our brief and beat us to the marketplace with a product. Uh, it just does not happen. It just competitors and have their own problems. They have their own view of the world and what the consumer or customer need is. And they're just not sitting around looking at what you're doing and trying to sit there and go, here's where Proctor's headed. We got to go block that. That doesn't happen. So, um, you know, I, I think the risks are there's such a much greater risk of missing something. You know, the opportunity risks are so high and the risk of something bad actually happening, I've not seen it. So I think it's totally a, in most cases, it's a, it's a fear of the unknown. It's a, um, you know, it's one of these things that people will put up as a barrier uh, because it's hard to get momentum moving to sort of move to action. But I think uh, the, I don't see hardly any risk, but that will be one that many people will think about, but it's, it's a phantom risk. It's not real in my opinion. The, uh, uh, the area of uh, innovation business models is an interesting one. Um, I think for the most part, innovation, innovation is not managed as, as a business model. Let's just take something as an analogy. Let's call it uh, uh, revenue and profit management. Okay. Now, think about how well organized companies are to deliver their revenues and profits, right? First of all, they have um, pro professional finance and accounting people, right, that really track the numbers and uh, know precisely where the money is going. They have annual budgets. There are monthly reconciliations of revenue and costs and uh, pro forma work to forecast what's going to happen the rest of the year. They're uh, tweaking the numbers and their actions on the go so that they can deliver the year-end numbers that they promise. The rewards systems and everything for at least senior management and most middle management to senior management are all tied to financial performance. Uh, and so lots and lots of systems, reconciliation, tracking, and so on, take innovation. There are, it's loosey-goosey in terms of what is it that we have to do? Where are the professional measurement systems? Where are uh, the strong linkages to rewards and so on? So if you take something like profits and revenue, which is very important, obviously, but think about innovation. Innovation is what eventually generates the profits and revenue because you're introducing new things that change the markets and constantly creating new sources of appeal and revenue for the consumer. So on the one hand, you'll be very rigorous about something. Yeah, obviously you can control profits and revenue, but the precursor, the thing that really drives that, it's very loose. So I think um, getting very clear then that we've got to, really bring the same kind of discipline and rigor to managing a sort of business model rigor to managing innovation is very important. And in the case of innovation business models, there is, you know, uh, a tight structure that we think is important, which is to get very clear on the mandate, very clear on the vision and goals, clear on where, where we're going to play, how we're going to win, the capabilities we need to develop, for those where to play and how to win areas, and then finally governance. So you're getting very clear on that. Mandate, vision, where to play, how to win capabilities and governance. And making very consistent choices that are relevant for your business, not copying what P&G did or what another company did, and certainly be inspired by that, but to look at your business in terms of the mandate you have and the situation you face and say, what is our innovation operating model? In the way that 
you know, operating results are achieved for the discipline uh, operating results are achieved in the revenue and profit area, we need to do the same thing on the innovation side.